Hello YouTube, Mystery Report newsletter and Tudor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is February 27th, 2021, and this is the monthly newsletter. And the second one for 2021. This is added to this will be added whenever it's whenever it's the video is done. I can put the link here. I'm gonna upload it to the 2021 Mystery Report Dropbox folder. So that all subscribers, that's how you access the newsletters through the Dropbox folder. And I see a lot of you guys have subscribed to the YouTube channel, which is right here. See the scripture channel? It's right here. That's where this video would be uploaded to, and it'll likely be uploaded also to the Brighteon to make new Brighteon subscribers aware. This is where you subscribe to the Mystery Report newsletters. This is just $25 per year. And then this is if you want to be a, a tutor member like Gary I'm helping in sister Sandy the um, clarifying statements article is for sister Sandy below Gary's so this is where you do that you get a copy of my book the mystery explained for free attached to your notification email your Dropbox folder link notification email and remember you get access to all the newsletters all the way from the beginning 2019 it starts with the 001 it goes upwards and you have a breadcrumb trail that's left for you to help you see God's hidden wisdom. Here are the six introductory videos. These are the long versions, these two here. These are the original 15 minute versions. They're right here. This is a, this is recommended that you go through these before starting the Mystery Explained so you can have a good foundation to stand on to help to eliminate the semantics. The, uh, when I'm saying gospel and you're saying gospel, we're thinking different things. So there's distinguish, you need to distinguish between the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the grace of God, the bride church, and the body of Christ church. The four baptisms, these differences and things, how the mystery di diagrams work, and things like that. This newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation, and everywhere in between. Once you see the pattern, this is really, really great stuff. It could be a little frustrating, as God's wisdom is hidden right there. It's right in front of your nose. When you see the, when you read his word through the lens of his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, it changes everything. And once you see it, it's a life-changing thing. So that's what this is about. Gary is going to be the focus. Um, he is a... Uh, Mystery Report Tutor subscriber uh, for $50 a year. And so he can send me his questions and back and forth we go. What you're seeing up here, these, uh, this is an assortment of radio shows that I've done, interviews back with Royce. He's passed away now. He used to just love to have me on and ask. And back in 2015, before the Mystery Explained was ever published, it was written in 2005. Took decades of research to put it together and wasn't published until November of 2017. And before we go any further, just as a reminder, I just sent the link to Dave. It's funny you were writing me, Dave, about this but as I was putting this together. And uh, so you do receive a copy, attached to your notification email. You can get a copy from me. This is the uh, author's copy, first edition. And uh, if you're inside the United States, but I sent you the link to where you can buy the Mystery Explained. If you just Google the Mystery Explained and Terrell Croft, that's my name, then you can see you can get a copy at Walmart. You can get a copy at Amazon and for half of what the cost is right here. It's funny that it, I'm seeing a price is out there that's cheaper than what I get them from my publisher. It's just, I guess so, Amazon buys a truckload of them and then it gets a lower price or something. I'm not quite sure how, how they do that. So, it's a little background. Then, once upon a time, you notice that these dates are all before COVID. This is where COVID just raised its head, and that program started. That limited my time. This was a once a week program. Now it's a once a month program. And but when you come in now, you get access to the newsletters all the way back to 2019. Then this is a awakened radio series that was done in 2012. One hour or 42 minutes with the commercials, something like that. And 
John went through and took all of the Black Star reports and the, the ads and everything out so that this is a good series to help those of you that want to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. And you get some background here whenever we're doing chat, question and answers. And you can access these by being a newsletter um, subscriber. So Gary is interested in the title of this email is Genesis 1-2, but he's going to ask questions about Satan, the Almighty, the dragon, the devil, and how these terms are used interchangeably. And he's asking some very, very, very good questions. And so this is his full, this is his full email that he wrote to start off. Then I break that down below. So I'm not going to read through all of this. That's how I like to leave it so that you can, you can see the full presentation before I start hacking it up. So if you're, if you just want to stop the page and read down and through, see exactly what, what, um, Gary's asking, and it, you can answer for yourself: Is he overanalyzing, or which, which, Gary? Guess what? My mom always accused me of that, even watching a movie or something. So some of us just that's just the way our brains work. So um, so this is my answer, and this was from January the twenty second. And uh, thank you for writing, for creating opportunities, for making clarifying statements. And so this is what he was wrote from above. And then I'm going to start chopping, cho you know, chopping this apart. He says, I watched your December 30th Mr. Report video. And I must say, I was pleasantly surprised how you have taken my questions and woven them into an educational bonanza for me. I was able to see my errors in vocabulary and thinking clearly and how you connected my separate thoughts and questions into one was amazing. As you said in your missed report, our vocabulary and definitions can get us totally confused. Your report has caused me to be more diligent in my questions to you by researching names, places throughout the book, um, that's the mystery explained, and the Bible via word search. I am in, in doing so, I hope to see your pattern in using various words and get a better understanding of your meaning in context and content. And in understanding the Almighty's redemption process before asking questions. I hope I'm not over analyzing and for your information the PDF of your book I'm using um, to do word searches may have slightly different page numbers. So the what you receive from whenever you subscribe is going to be the EPUB version and you're going to use uh, Adobe Digital Editions to be able to read that. You can read that in your Kindle book then there's also a PDF version. Once you're a subscriber like Gary, then if you write to me, then, I, then I'm happy to just send it to you as an attachment. That's the copy that I used to give away for years and years and years. And it is a longer version of the book, too. There's some things in the PDF version you're not going to find in, the, in the, uh, the Kindle version or the EPUB version. So currently my study and this email, this is still, this is Gary, is focused on understanding the meanings and relationships of the main players in the rebellion against Almighty God. So that Satan, dragon, the devil, has a spirit witnesses, and on how each realm is discussed properly with each of the main players. So before I go any further, the thing to realize is that nobody ever written on these topics. So there wasn't a, uh, a source, a common source. Like we could go all look up and and look at the definitions and then be on the same page. Um, this is it reminds me of going through my uh, my medical the medical part of my career with inventing new devices that nobody had ever used before. So you have to create your own terminology as you're going through. So uh, currently my study in this email is focused on understanding the meaning of the relationships of the main players and. Uh, so in answering his questions, I'm going to say no. And as I'm looking through here, I'm having difficulty finding a question mark and making, making myself wonder if I copied and pasted that. Anyway, I'll, I'll check into that. Satan is no spirit witness in the sense that no such thing as spirit, blood, and water exists in God's infinite realm. The entire realm consists of singularity hosts that are infinite. Satan's three witnesses in heaven are the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Satan can be considered 
a spirit witness in his relationship with his three witnesses in heaven and earth. So I know that sounds, if you've never seen any of this before, that sounds really complicated. Once you can see, it's like going and visiting a place. Once you've been there and you've seen it, it becomes very simple. If you haven't ever been there and somebody's explaining it to you, it's a little difficult for you to figure out what they're trying to, to show you or what they're trying to say. So let's just begin at the very beginning. In the beginning, God, this is a realm. Created the heaven, that's a realm. And the earth, that's an entire realm. This is a realm of spirit. This is a realm of blood. This is a realm of water. And this, this is the, well, God hid his key to unlocking his code in the first verse of the Bible. And you're looking at it right here. Then we want to go to the next diagram. And it looks like this. So God's infinite realm was left as a singularity here. Heaven is broken down into my Father who art in heaven. Th think about where my Father who art in heaven gets his name. My Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy. My Father who art in heaven. My Father who is in heaven. If you're in the modern translations. He gets his name from heaven of Genesis 1 1. The only begotten Son. And the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You've seen this before, right? That is heaven of Genesis 1, 1. And it's the word from John 1, 1 through 3. And the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Do you know why? Because God and his word are one and the same thing in God's infinite realm. All things were made by him, which... The by there's through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So heaven of Genesis 1 is the word of John 1, 1 through 3. And then verse 14 where the word becomes flesh. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as one person walking around on the earth. is the word of God who was made flesh. We know him as Jesus Christ. So he represents and testifies for this entire realm. So when John the Baptist says that he's from heaven, from above, and that John is from the earth, and he testifies of the earth. This is what John the Baptist is talking about. John the Baptist testifying for this realm. Jesus Christ is testifying for this realm. That's right here. That's above the earth. Okay, so now, so this is the three witnesses of heaven, but this is the three witnesses of the earth. Genesis 1, 6 through 8. The water is above the firmament, the water is below the firmament, and the firmament is called heaven. Or the expanse, depending on which version that you're using. Though so the heavens, heaven, and earth have the same relationship, spirit, blood, water, as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who also have the same relationship as God to come, God who is, and God who was. So in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, you see God speaking there. God who is, is the speaker. Saying, let us make man in our image. Man, woman, seed. Three witnesses, spirit, blood, water. And this is, the, this is a man. The man Christ Jesus is sitting right here. He's between God and man. The man, which is not talking about a human being man. It's talking about a one plus two plus three man equals six. The number of man is 6. 1 plus 2 plus 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3. These three witness mystery sets are everywhere in the Bible. In my book, you'll see charts of them. And then you start to see the pattern. And then you realize who's testifying. So whenever God who is is saying, let us make man like us, us includes God to come, God who is, and God who is to come. Spirit, blood, and water. And they're created in that image. Male is the spirit witness. The image and glory of God. Woman is the water witness. The image of man. Water witness. The earth. See it? So, it's important that we go through these, the foundational part here so that we're all speaking and using the same terms. And you can see why if people have never seen this avenue before, gone down this path to see it, then 
we have to create the terms. So three witness mystery sets. It's not biblical. The word Bible is not in the Bible. But this is the word, this is the phrase that we use to understand the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three witnesses testifying for a singularity who is God's word. Or heaven. They're interchangeable. Okay. So, let me go back over here in reference to what said no. So, Satan is, he's not a spirit witness in, this, in, in the sense that no such thing like that even exists in God's infinite realm. Okay, so let's go to this diagram. This is God, this is the heaven, and this is the earth. The same diagram that you just looked at, but explained in more detail. So, Satan is, is a man to come, who is, who was, just like God. Just like all singularity hosts. Everything that God makes in the infinite realm, see the stones of fire? That's where the sons of God dwell. There's a counterpart in heaven that's the, it's like a great pyramid where Christ is the capstone. So, as we rise in that, in heaven, with our, with our works, in the heavens and the earth, the heaven and the earth, we are also rising in this simultaneously, this mountain of God, the same way. So, if you're going to understand who Satan is, because just like Gary is saying, the word is used interchangeably. Satan is an infinite realm. The, Satan, the, the satanic rebellion took place here where we are gods. This is the only realm that's real. Heaven and earth are created. They have a beginning and they have an end. The time is created. It's an illusion. Time does not really exist. There's no such thing as time and space in the infinite realm. Everything is infinite. But this is where the satanic rebellion happened. This is where Satan, where God created Satan for a particular purpose. He created him for the purpose of keeping a secret. For some reason, God decided it was best in everybody's best interest for him to have secrets from the sons of God. He created this anointed cherub that covers to do just that. And Satan in all of his works and all of his glory and his deeds and everything become the, the biggest chicken in the chicken house with all the most beautiful stones in his chest plate. Those stones give you access to the entire realm. If you do not know that the door is there, you cannot, obviously you don't know the door is there, you can't pass through it. Satan knows where all the doors are and he's hidden them. And he's managed to be able to use the gifts that God gave him to hide those things right in plain sight. So the doors, the, the passageways, going to the inner chambers, to God's hidden wisdom, they're right there in front of us in the infinite realm, and we cannot see them. God hid them right in, right in, in uh, what it reminds me of is the little highlights book on page 23 when I was a kid. The picture inside the, the little pictures inside the pictures. That's the way Satan works. It's hidden right there in plain sight, and that's the way God's wisdom works. It's hidden right in plain sight. Once you see it, you can see the outlines of it, boom, you can see it. But until then, you're looking, scanning the whole picture, looking in, and you just cannot see it. And it's kind of, kind of frustrating. Okay, so just looking at this diagram, then you, Satan is up here, and Adam is up here as a singularity. Eve is inside of him. The seed is inside of him, just like the beast is inside of him. Satan, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are all inside of him, spirit, blood, and water. There's no, they, there's no such thing as, as the dragon or the devil in this realm. There's no such thing as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in this realm either. They exist here in heaven after heaven slash the word was sacrificed. God had to sacrifice his word in order to send him into heaven of this realm so the Lamb of God take away the sin of the entire realm. So, this is how it begins. Pretty easy, and things get a little more complicated as you go. If you can see them, it's very easy. If you're struggling to see them, you haven't seen them yet, then it can be a little difficult. Like, seeing, seeing God's wisdom, God actually puts his hand on you and says, boom, now you, the time is appointed for you to see it. So, these things were discovered over decades through great amounts of prayer so for example 666 
Revelation 13.18. He who has wisdom, he will understand. 666 is the number of a man. Very similar to the man Christ Jesus in 1 Timothy 2.5. The man Christ Jesus is not a literal man. The man in Revelation 13.18 is not a literal man either. This is the 1 plus 2 plus 3. The dragon, the feast, and the false prophet in here, but in down in this realm is the devil, the antichrist, and the false prophet. This is the son of destruction. Whatever you want to, you know. He's given names in heaven. He's given names in the earth. This is their name in the earth right here. It's a 666 man. Spirit, blood, and water. Devil, antichrist, false prophet. Here's the 77 seven, seven man. Elijah, Moses, and the Lord God that made them in the garden. The first is the Lord God, Adam and Eve. The last is the Lord God, Elijah and Moses. So this is the 7-7 seven, seven man that's coming in to replace the 6-6-6 six, six, six man that is fading away. And this is the realm of the domain of darkness, time and space. This is heaven. This is Christ Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is where we have an inheritance while those that are on the, the sons of darkness have an inheritance over here and this if you keep continue reading the book the mystery explained you'll see that this is the lake of fire they're ba being baptized through the mystery of iniquity they're being baptized into this lake of fire that's in the center we are baptized into Christ so we are seated in the heavenly places with Jesus Christ in Christ Jesus these are the heavenly places that we're talking about right here it's just in a simplified form Okay, so to say Satan is a spirit witness is not accurate. To say that my father who art in heaven is a spirit witness in the infinite realm, that's not accurate either. It doesn't exist there. He's part of God's word. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all a singularity. And not only that, they are in God's word. They're in God right now because God and his word are the same thing in the infinite realm. So by this, by learning that about that relationship, then you can turn around and apply it to Satan and his three witnesses that are in heaven and his three witnesses that are in the earth. So the devil, there's no such thing as the devil in the infinite realm or the dragon, no such thing. One's in heaven, the dragon, and one's in the earth, the devil. But they are testifying. They're three witnesses, you see. They're testifying for Satan in the infinite realm. The devil does that, the beast, and the false prophet, and all the words can, that come out of their mouths combined. Three different bodies, just like you have a spirit, soul, and a body. Three different bodies, but all testifying for the same singularity. So the singularity, that's you. That's your name. You are David. You are Gary. Three witnesses are testifying for Gary, though. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. When you, when you get that image, you get that picture, then you're going to realize, ah, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are testifying for Satan in the infinite realm. The devil... The, uh, the son of destruction and the false prophet are testifying in the earth for Satan in the infinite realm and for the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet in heaven. So this is a, on earth as it is in heaven as it is in the infinite realm thing. Christ, when he's talking about how to pray, he's talking about my father who art in heaven. And then he says that things are being done on earth as it is in heaven. That's incomplete. On earth as it is in heaven as it is in the infinite realm it's really three there's a trinity of all these things and oftentimes the key this is the key God gives you two of those parts he gives you the water witness and the blood witness but he doesn't give you the spirit witness or he gives you the spirit witness and the blood witness doesn't give you the water witness and you are supposed to see the pattern and then put the other witness together for example Christ the Bible talks about the body of Christ that we are the body of Christ that's a blood witness we're kings and rulers 1 Corinthians chapter 10, start at 1. There's also a body of Moses. Moses is at the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17. Christ is in the Mount of Transfiguration, the Lord God. Who's missing? The body of Elijah. Taught by the types. Not taught by what's in the types. Taught what is missing from the types. Once you see the three witnesses, then you can see the body of Elijah represents the angels. That's why he never saw death. He went to the heaven in the chariot of fire. Angels go to heaven too. They don't have to die to go to heaven like we do. The angels are the greater half of us. That's why we judge the world and the angels because they are two halves of the same thing. Okay, that's a little periphery information for those that are following, that are following along there. 
So um, in each case, so this is how it's written out. And all those words that I just gave you. Satan's three witnesses in heaven are the dragon, the beast, the false prophet. Satan can be considered the spirit witness in his relationship with his three witnesses in heaven and earth. The devil, the son of destruction, and the false prophet. I know that sounds a little bit complicated. So what's, the thing is that God uses these things in his, in his word so that his, he can show his sons his wisdom. But those blinded by the deluding influence are going to see something else. So the Bible can be interpreted thousands of different ways. That's why there's that many different denominations of professing Christians. Everybody thinks they have the truth. The deluding influence forces them to believe what is false because they accepted a false gospel. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2, seven. So there's a mystery of Christ, where I'm baptized into Christ, seated in the heavenly places. There's a mystery of iniquity. That's the antithesis doctrine. Because the Bible is a four-dimensional living document. That I'm going to get into by the time we get to the bottom of this down here. So as I, then um, Gary goes on, as I word searched both your book and the Bible looking for patterns, I seem to find names used separately or mixed together various locations throughout both books find no, no particular pattern which is the part that I find confusing and what is correct way to discuss each as an example in page 28 of your book you write Peter describes the destruction of this entire atom creation resulting from satanic rebellion demonstrated in Genesis 1 2 now here it appears to me that Satan is being used as a noun describing the entire rebellion from the start in the infinite realm and ending up in the lake of fire. And that's going to be exactly right. The satanic rebellion took place in God's infinite realm. The battle taking place between Michael the Archangel and the dragon is happening right now. It's happening right now as we speak, which is a recreation of things already done. Okay, let me stop right here. Heaven of Genesis 1-1 is an almost infinite universe. It's between the infinite realm where we're gods and this finite realm that's like a drop of water in comparison. So if you think about it, the differential, there's a, there's a time and space differential. The almost infinite realm, the, the least that's in the kingdom of heaven, the least is still almost infinite, and that's Peter. He's the least in the kingdom of heaven. And so he's greater than John the Baptist, who is the greatest born of women, because John the Baptist is representative of Adam, who represents this entire universe, the heavens, heaven, and earth. He represents the whole thing. And yet, the whole universe is a drop of water compared to the least that's in the kingdom of heaven, because it's almost infinite. The, the least host there is almost infinite. Our creation is finite, extremely and like a drop of water compared to heaven and, and heaven and earth combined are like a drop of water not even that compared to the infinite realm so the dragon and Michael the archangel fighting their battle is like two constellations it's like you know Libra and Virgo and they're having a war but from our perspective they're frozen still because we're so small and they're so far away so what happened in the infinite realm has happened with the dragon and that dragon's head's been cut off but his head hasn't yet hit the ground. His taste falling he's falling to collapse on to the ground in heaven but he hasn't hit the ground yet. His tail is pulling across the sky and as it, that's happening the stars are falling from the heaven of Genesis 1 down to the earth of Genesis 1 1. That's the incarnation of the sons of disobedience, the Cains. They are the governors, the rulers Prince of the uh, powers in the heavenly places, Ephesians six twelve. They're pushing the levers. That's why you have predator prey scenarios. That's why people die here. They're not supposed to. Things are going to change. People are going to live to be more than a thousand years again. A man that lives a hundred years is a baby. That's how things are going to change in the future. So. The thing to realize is the Satan, re the Satanic Rebellion happened in the infinite realm where we're gods. We all know each other. Take a look around. You could be sitting in a baseball stadium with 100,000 people or a football stadium. You know every single one of them intimately from the inside out. You're a god. They're a god. Where we come from, we all know, it, we all know each other. Some of us are 
are victims of the satanic rebellion. Some of us are perpetrators that worked with Satan to destroy. We're living these lives doing things again and again, just like it says in Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 11. Just things that have been done, they're already, we're doing things that have already been done twice. First in the infinite realm, second in heaven. So whenever the, the, uh, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet all go into the lake of fire, that's, the, that's a recreation. That's a remaking, a retelling of the same story that happened in God's infinite realm when the Satan was thrown out. And then when the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet were destroyed, which is in a work in progress right now. So our time here in this universe is catching up to what's happening in heaven. And God's just going to snap his fingers and change everything and make a new heaven and a new earth, and off we go again in the next age. Whenever death and Hades are in the lake of fire along with Satan. See, I'm saying Satan, but now you should realize that that is the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Just like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit when you're talking about God's Word. So when you get accustomed to speaking about the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, then you're going to realize that that's Satan. Just like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that's the Word. It's the same thing. It's just we have to recognize that and make the application. In the same way, and all speak the same language in three about three witness mystery sets. So another example on page 42, um, Satan caused the breaking of the universe, resulting in uh, God calling the angels and men into existence to, happen, to inhabit the divided heavens and earth realm. The devil's evil rulers of this darkness have been controlling this broken universe from that time to this very day. So we have a mixture of Satan and the devil. It seems that way, doesn't it? As you're coming to understand, once you understand we're talking about a seed that is sown in there that's that's what's happening but then that seed's got to be watered that seed becomes the shoot and then the branches come off of that shoot and then it bears the fruit that's the wisdom that contains the next generation of seeds so the this is what I've already explained to you Michael the, Michael the archangel and the dragon fighting that's God in the dragon fighting in the infinite realm and then whenever our Lord comes and has the judgment, then the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are going to be judged and all thrown in the lake of fire. That's the third and final time. It's three witnesses, always a spirit, a blood, and a water. If you only see one of them or two of them, there's the third. Once you see God's wisdom, then you are open to seeing even more of it. Once you see the patterns of what's going on. Gary writes, an example from the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew. God spent 40 days and 40 nights with Satan in the wilderness, but overcame, and the devil left him. And behold, angels came and began to minister to him. So there's a mixture again of Satan and the devil in one sentence. So then I wrote, Satan appears in Matthew 4.10, with the devil appearing in the next verse, but I see the point that you're making. So this is the quote right here. Jesus says to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil left him, and behold, the angels came and began to serve him. So Jesus interacting with Satan is a replay of God dealing with Satan in God's infinite realm through his word. Jesus is the word here, and Satan is the corresponding singularity host. The prophecy from Ecclesiastes 1, 9-11 is being fulfilled with things being done that have already been done. The devil then left him, and the angels came, where the spirit witnesses of this atomic realm are in action as a response to the events from verse 10. Some of the confusion is caused deliberately by God. This is going to sound bad, but this is the way God hides his wisdom in plain sight. So some confusion is caused um, deliberately by God as his, his living word is structured to be interpreted in a thousand different ways while containing just one truth. A full understanding of God's wisdom using his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water offers the keys for solving all the seeming riddles. All the seeming contradictions m melt away when you look through the lens with understanding of God's three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water. So, Then these four examples, and I can easily go with more examples, are to illustrate to you that I find names Satan, Dragon, Devil, are being used interchangeably as a spirit part of a trinity but not always depending on which realm you're talking about this I find confusing but am I correct 
Is it correct to say Satan was created in the infinite realm and was kicked out into the word realm, which is heaven, by God, and become became in the world realm in the word realm the dragon, beast, false prophet, the Trinity? And so I don't see a question mark there behind Trinity, but I know you meant to put one there. And the answer is going to be yes. Satan was created in the infinite realm. He was kicked out and then went to heaven. From the, He was kicked down into heaven, the created realm, so God could deal with him in time and space. And became, in the word realm, he's the dragon, which is the spirit witness. This is the blood witness, this is the water witness. So in, in reality, the, the soul of Satan is in the beast, just like the soul of the word is in Jesus Christ. I believe that you write the dragon is an incarnation of Satan in the word realm and the devil is the incarnation of Satan in the earth realm. Now that is really, really close. That's it. You, you got it right there. Also known as the atomic realm. Is this correct? Yes, this is correct. When and where should one use the various name of Satan, dragon, and devil? The Bible, it seems to me, appears to use Satan and the devil interchangeably all the time. Is it okay to do so? Uh, to do this, since the devil is an incarnation of Satan in the earth realm, should I always use the name devil when I'm speaking of the ruler of the earth realm and Satan when speaking in the infinite realm? And the, the, the answer to all those is yes. It looks like yet you got it. Or you can speak, or you can do what I do, and which is when you've seen this for d decades and you See, whenever you can see something, it's like visiting a place. You can describe it to other people, left, right, up, and down. It's just so easy. And that's what the that's my advantage of being able to see. Because this began, I'm I'm in my 60s now, and this began when I was a teenager. So, and God showed me over a long period of time, lots and lots of prayer, how these things work, and I could see it before I ever wrote the book. That's how the diagrams were drawn in the first place. Yes, or you can speak from knowledge knowing the difference and use the names interchangeably where only those mature in the knowledge of God's wisdom will know the difference. Satan is a singularity created in God's infinite realm to cover, hide God's secrets. The dragon, beast, false prophet are Satan's three witnesses in heaven. Like the devil, the son, the son of destruction, and the false prophet are Satan's three witnesses in the earth. Stop right here. Satan is going to incarnate onto this earth as a man at the end of the age. In just over 3,000 years he's going to do that. His son is going to be the beast. And the person that works with them, for them, is going to be their false prophet. All three of them are going to walk around in human bodies at the end of the age to be dealt with by our Lord and God. It's going to be great if it happens. We're going to be seeing that happen from above. Like the, the, the devil's children are looking down from those heavenly places, those powers of authority right now. We're going to be looking down from those places. And we're going to have over 3,000 years of experience by the time the end of the age comes. To do those things. And whenever we come back, Colossians chapter 3, read 1 through 4. Then you can realize that Matthew 24 is about us. We return with him in that great glory. We'll already be with him over 3,000 years by the time we come back. And we're going to be uh, um, extremely mighty. One son of God can take on the whole earth. And, we, and there's going to be lots and lots and lots and lots of us when we come back. That's how the devil and his people at the Battle of Armageddon are destroyed in one gigantic swoop. For a hundred square miles, blood and bones to the bridal height of a horse. That hadn't happened so quickly. It's, um, it's just unbelievable how you can't even imagine the force and the power that we're talking about that's released at the end of the age whenever we come back with the Lord in great glory. It is just a great thing. In the same way, your man part lives in the earth and your greater angel half lives in the heavens until the two become one again. And your immortal living soul lives in heaven. So... You hear over and over again that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Guess what? Angels don't either. So many people think angels belong in heaven. They don't. They're put there as messengers. God opens the veil between the heavens and heaven, and he brings his messengers in to let them do the work that has to be done. Otherwise, 
your angel half is on the other side of two veils from you this heavens in the middle the heavens are on the far side and the earth is on this side so you have a greater half an angel on the other side at the rapture boom those two are going to become one and you talk about glory there you see that because it's when you put the two witnesses together it's greater than the sum of the parts the living soul is really a great great thing indestructible thing so um your father part spirit your holy spirit part the water witness there's a spirit witness part and there's a water witness part in heaven that's almost infinite so you're already there you don't know it yet you're already there the difference is for us the members of Christ's body what makes us different than Peter John and James is that our father half and our Holy Spirit half are already put back together again we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus as finished products done so our reality here is going to catch up to that reality there at the moment of the rapture pow all of a sudden the moment the twinkling of an eye there we go the glory begins the devil and his children are already all chained we go through our judgment for good works in the flesh, Second Second Corinthians chapter five, verse ten, and then we go to occupy those vacated heavenly places and help Elijah in the restoration of all things. Elijah can't come and restore anything at this moment; he doesn't have the power of Elijah. That's in the body of Christ. We have to be delivered. Then the Holy Spirit returns, and the Spirit of the Father returns, the power from on high, and they come together inside of Elijah, and Elijah be the most powerful thing to ever walked this planet. That's coming. He's going to tell everybody what to do on the planet, the whole planet. He's going to tell the sons from space that are going to come down in their spaceships. They're all around us. And they're going to do exactly what Elijah says. Anybody that doesn't do exactly what Elijah says is utterly destroyed from among the people. Acts chapter 3, you start at 19. Till you get down to 26. And you'll see that Elijah, when he's coming, he's going to be a real uh, bad... Uh, um, most powerful thing in that of any anything that ever walked this planet is going to be Elijah whenever he comes here. Okay, so I just gave you this part that's right here. Then another confusing example in the Bible. Job 1, 6 through 8. And so this is Job 1, and this is the Lord speaking. You see, the sons of God are right here, the Lord's right here. The Lord said to Satan. And the Lord answered, uh, the Satan answered the Lord. Here's Satan, the Lord. That's right here. And then God. That's right here. Seems kind of confusing, don't you? You got the Lord, and you got God, and you got Satan. Okay, so how do you reconcile these things? So, first, allow me to recommend that you begin using the New King James Version or the New American Standard Version of the Bible. So, these words are not used anymore. Go look this guy up. So this is 17th century English. If you want to confuse people and you keep yourself confused, keep reading 1602, 1610 English. That's what this is. So if you, I I used the New American Standard Bible. The, the um, I used the King James Version first. The New King James Version. This is from the Received Text. This is the Antiochian manuscripts. They're the newer ones from ever Paul. Um, in his ministry in Antioch. So you can read about it in the book of Acts. Then this New American Standard Version right here, this is the one I use today. I used this one for a, the first decade of my, my Bible research. Then I switched over because it was important that I switch over because I want to know what the older Egyptian, the Byzantine text said. And so there are places where they're different. And then the majority text incorporates what's the same in both versions of that and they show you where the forks in the road are so the Bible that sits right here beside me is a um, it's a it's a Greek in a linear Bible and so you're looking right at the Greek you want to look at right at the Greek you want to look at the prefixes the suffixes the roots of the words and things and then you're going to want to know what the received text says and what the critical text says and then you can find the forks in the road and the Holy Spirit will help you do those things and I did all those things in studying the Bible and but whenever I saw the three witnesses that changed everything no, there's no longer the need to dissect and trisect the original languages there's no need for it once you see through the lens of the of the three witnesses but it's very very confusing if you're reading out of the old old English and I'm reading out of the modern English I think it's going to help you when you're trying to resolve things 
to at least use a modern translation. Remember that the Old Testament is written in Hebrew and parts Aramaic, and the New Testament is, and you're reading from right to left. In the New Testament, then you're reading the ancient Greek, not today's Greek, the ancient Greek, what the words meant 2,000 years ago. And it's going to be from left to right, and parts of it's going to be Aramaic too. So anything you have in English is a translation. Anything that you see that's in Latin is a translation. These are all translations. But whenever you are reading the Old Testament, you want to think in Hebrew. And whenever you're reading the New Testament, you want to think in Greek. It's important that you do that. If you're using today's definitions, you're never going to get there. Okay, so in answer to your question, that's right here. The sons of God, these are gods, the sons of the Most High from Psalms 82.6. Jesus Christ brings this up in answering his uh, critics in John chapter 10, start at verse 34. And then the Lord is the Lord God of Genesis 2, 4 plus. This is the Lamb of God. This is the Word. And he has many different names because there's lots of different incarnations, pardon me, of the same thing. God's Word incarnate. When you're talking about the Lamb of God, that's God's Word incarnate. It's actually Christ Jesus incarnate, which is heaven of Genesis 1 incarnate. Now I know this gets a little bit complicated. It becomes uncomplicated when you can see it. So whenever John saw Christ, John the Baptist, he saw Christ, he says, this is the Lamb of God, takes away the sins of the world, because Jesus Christ is an incarnation of the Lamb of God, who was in heaven, who's been in heaven. He's there right now. Christ Jesus is heaven of Genesis 1-1. He's there right now. God raised Jesus Christ above all the heavens of this universe and seated him right beside himself, in Christ Jesus. That's where Jesus Christ that walked this earth is sitting this moment. In the center of the almost infinite realm. That's where he's at. And then consider that Christ in you, Colossians 1, 27, is an incarnation of Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is in you. That's heaven of Genesis 1, 1. It's an incarnation. And inside of Christ in you is God reconciling the world to himself. Explain that a little bit on the in the last in the last video. So the Lamb of God is the this is what I just explained to you. The Lamb of God is the incarnation of heaven, that is Christ Jesus, the one mediator that is also the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Satan was created in God's infinite realm like the gods, where God's word and God are one and the same. So Satan's three witnesses are the dragon, beast, and the false prophet, and the devil, the son. So this is their heavenly, this is their earthly, right here. So the Lord is the Lord God. See, the gods, they're the sons of God. The sons of God they're talking to there, they are gods in the infinite realm. So then Satan, we, we, just, yeah, we just went through all these times. The heaven part, the earth part. And then God the Almighty is God to come, God who is, and God who was. Testifying in the heaven and the earth. God who speaks in Genesis 1, 26-28 addresses God to come and God who was as us. And he's talking about making man and woman, spirit witness and water witness, in their image, our image, us. The seed that's in the middle is the blood witness. That enlarges. The thing about all blood witnesses is they all enlarge and they all testify for the original singularity. So, um... Take it one, one step further here. So speaks to God who was. Let me see if I can get back to where I was. Addresses God to come God, and God who was. That's God who is who does that. Jesus Christ speaks of my Father who art in heaven and the Holy Spirit in the same way. Even though the three are into the one. As God's word. That's why it seems to be a little bit confusing. I know a lot of people that are confused over my Father who art in heaven. You think that's God and it's not. My Father who art in heaven is the spirit witness of the word. So then, are the sons of God spoken of here in the infinite realm or in the word realm? And I have to say both. And these sons of God also have incarnations in the earth realm. The earth realm, infinite realm events are playing out for the third time. I think I'm missing a verb right here. Is, is the Lord God, this is um, Gary talking, asking, is the Lord spoken of here the Almighty 
of the infinite realm or Christ Jesus of the word realm or Jesus Christ of the earth realm. See, this gets, when you realize there's so many incarnations, it gets a little bit, a little bit tricky. So the Lord in the passage is God's word, who is heaven incarnate, the Lamb of God incarnate, Jesus Christ incarnate, who is also God's living and active word. That's the Bible. The Bible is God's living and active word, Hebrews 4.12. Living and active. Okay. That is a blueprint of Christ Jesus, heaven. And it's also a blueprint of heaven of Genesis 1.8. And it's a blueprint of the Lamb of God and of New Jerusalem and Christ in you. The incarnation of Christ Jesus incarnate in the sons of God. Remember that the story told using Jacob happened in God's infinite realm and in heaven before happening for the third time in the Adamic realm. The devil and um Oh, the dragon in heaven and the devil in the earth can be characterized as Satan in the same way that God's word is Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, and he's, and raised at the right hand, ra and raised at right hand of God, raised above the heavens. That's Ephesians 4, 8 through 10. So, um, so on and so forth. So what I'm tr trying to do here is to help you see a pattern so that you can see that you're going to treat Satan the same way you do as God's word. Both are singularities in God's infinite realm, just like us. We're gods. We don't have any soul. We don't have any spirit or body in the infinite realm. They're all the same thing. When you put them in heaven and the earth, though, they become trinities. It's like the singularity being shown through a prism. But rather than breaking into seven rays, which are actually three, then they're broken down into three rays. That's where the trinities come from. And there are tons and tons and tons of them. Once you begin to see them. Then as a bonus, we're at 51 minutes right here. Then um, Sandy wrote, if you want to know about Moses and the Black Star, she said, wow, yesterday's show was packed full of good info. And that's the thing about these lessons that are right here. Some people get a ton out of them and very grateful. And other people look at them and they look at it for five minutes and probably turn them off. They just don't see a darn thing. That's the way God's wisdom works. Um, but leaves many questions. So I have one more for today and I'll leave you alone. So, um... When did the black star come during Moses' time? I must have missed that. And how many times has it come during a present-day Bible? How many more times will it come? Please be specific. I'm studying as much as I can. Rome wasn't built in a day. My brain can only handle so much at a time. But time is running short, and that is so true. That is so true. You guys, members of Christ's body, for whom Christ died, have the greatest opportunity to rise up in the pyramid of heaven, which is our abode. That's where we live. And then, in the mountain of God in the infinite realm, you have the opportunity right now. Because this, this three witness, spirit, blood, and water, through the mystery explained, the book is color-coded, and it represents the helper of the scriptures. The helper. God's book, God's Bible, His word, is the spirit witness. This, this little water witness, little book, the mystery explained, that is the helper. Just like the Holy Spirit is the helper. Just like Eve's the helper. All water witnesses are the helper. And the red book in the middle, that's your book that you're going to make. It's begotten. And it's going to testify for everything once you start. If you read the book and you follow the exercises and, and you do what the book says, you're going to see things that are unimaginable. So then, um, this is her message all put together. And this is when I start breaking it down. And so she says... Um, because uh, Sister Sandy, was, she was writing me quite a bit. And so this is one of the end ones. She says, then I'll leave you alone. I go, promises, promises. But I'm just kidding. My apologies for taking so long to respond. My apologies to all you guys. It's, uh, you can see the dates on these. February 9th. You can see how long it's taking. It's, it's just so much work to do the, in these days. Um, so where did the, where, uh, when did the Black Star come during Moses' day? I go, hmm. The black star comes to the inner solar system every 3,600 years before coming to trigger Noah's flood and has come every 3,600 years since. That includes the days of Moses to produce the earth changes. The black star is returning to the inner solar system now for the prophet of Acts 3, 19-26, which I just shared with you guys, coming to restore all things to fulfill the prophecies from the last two verses of the Old Testament. This is about restoring the hearts of the fathers to children and hearts of the children to their fathers. And what we're talking about there is innocence and immortality. 
that's the restoration of all things. Innocence and immortality are returning. The devil is about to be chained. And then we're going to go through this day of the Lord. And then the devil's going to be released with his people. Devil, beast going to come along, false prophet. The um, devil's going to try to kill the uh, quote unquote Messiah, as he's described in Daniel. We're talking about David from Ezekiel chapter 34, start at 22. And, he, and then you, when you just keep reading Ezekiel, right through 34, 35, 36, and you're going to see a dozen uses of the term desolation. Because he's going to be made desolate. And he's going to be killed in his own guillotine. It's going to happen. And then, so, and then he's going to come back with the, as one of the two witnesses at the very end. Because we're talking about Adam and Eve, those two witnesses. That are going to, they're the last, like Adam and Eve were the first. And um, there are the two olive trees of Zechariah 4, start at verse 11 up to 14. And so the black star will cause the destruction that comes suddenly from 1 Thessalonians 5 to start the coming of the day of the Lord. It's right here. The day of the Lord is at hand. That's what Paul talks about. And the reason that he says that this, is, this comes like a thief in the night is because none of the Old Testament prophets were ever allowed to see how the day of the Lord starts. They could only see how it ends. They can see way over here. Here's the better diagram right here. They're standing back here in the Old Testament, and they can see very well over here to the day of the Lord. This is one reason that so many professing Bible experts, prophecy experts, they think that we are way over here, and we're here. This diagram was drawn in 2005. And this today thingy is way, it's just right there. It's just, Black Star's almost here now. And remember, whenever this was drawn, there was no Black Star investigation. It wasn't coming for another what, five, six years. 2011, six years after this was drawn. So this thousand years day of the Lord is 3,600 years. As a thousand years. And th these prophecies that take place back here, the Great Tribulation, the uh, Second Resurrection. So the first resurrection happens here. Peter, John, and James, they're going to be raised with us. They're going to stand on the Sea of Glass out in front. They're going to provide intercession for everybody else in heaven, where we are the members of Christ's body. We are the members of the Lamb's body in the center of the throne. So we're going to judge the world and the angels? We, we sure are. God, Christ, heaven is incarnate inside of us, and God is incarnate inside of him. God is the judge. He's going to do it from his tabernacles, his living tabernacles. That's what we are. So these Old Testament prophets, they can't see inside of here. There's a veil here, and there's a veil here. That's why you see this veil, first veil, second veil. These people cannot see inside of here. This this um, dispensation of God's grace, Ephesians 3, 2. This actually happened is the day of the Lord has already started, but it was held in abeyance. John the Baptist came, the day of the Lord started. Israel rejected the gospel of the kingdom. From John the Baptist, Christ, and the twelve. Stephen, right here. Stephen's name means crown. If you read chapters... Uh, Acts 6 and 7, you'll see that he was full of the Holy Spirit. That's the blasphemy that Israel could not overcome. They did not accept the truth of John the Baptist, allowed him to die in prison. They did not accept the truth from Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom. And they demanded he, he be crucified. Remember, crucify him, crucify him. And then Christ said that, well, you can get away with that, but you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So that's strike three. And that's exactly what Israel did when they killed Stephen with their own hands. Paul was right there. Saul was right there, which is, his name is interchangeable. If you're a Jew, you refer to him as Saul. If you're a Gentile, you refer to him as Paul. Most everybody back then had two names. One was, if they were a Jew. And Paul was a Roman citizen who was also a Pharisee. Made him kind of unique. So, um, the black star came in the days of Noah, came in the days of Moses. It's coming right here on this line for the prophet of Acts 3. And it's coming again back here. Jesus Christ quotes Joel 2. The sun turning dark, the moon not for giving forth its light, signs from the stars, the heavens and things. That's going to happen at the end of the age when the black star comes on the next black star orbit cycle. We're going to have a May crossing event here, and we're going to have a November crossing event here when the earth is going to be destroyed. That's what Peter writes about in Second Peter chapter 3. So I described the veils here and the destruction that's coming. So we're getting ready to put on immortality. These verses, what's told in these verses is about to be fulfilled. This is the trumpet that sounds off behind John in Revelation 1.10. Almost nobody sees that trumpet. This is the trumpet here, 52 
in verse 16 over here. And the reason it's, it sounds off behind John is because he's a kingdom disciple. He's standing inside the day of the Lord, which is, is characterized as the Lord's day. So it happens behind him. He cannot see it because he cannot see through this veil. The, horn, the sound sounds off right here and we're taken, we're caught up in the twinkling of an eye, turned into glory, immortality. Okay, so you stand back here, you can't, they don't see anything in here. They see everything that's happening over here. Only Paul can tell you what happens inside of here. That's why said, many, many people believe that Paul's a heretic. Because they want to believe so much what's in the four Gospels that that's kingdom doctrine for Israel only. That's supposed to go to the whole world, but Israel's got accepted first. They never did. That's the transgression Paul writes about. Romans 11, start at 7. Peter, John, and James are those who are called, those who are chosen. Everybody else, the Pharisees, the um, lawyers, Sadducees, even the scribes, they were not saved. They were Their hearts were hardened. And Israel continues to be hardened to this day, Romans eleven twenty five, until we are taken out of the way. So, amen, sister. She, oh, she says, to be specific, I'm studying as much as I can. Rome, Rome wasn't built in a day. My brain can only handle so much. That, that goes for me, too. And our time is running short. That is absolutely 100% the truth. I say, amen, sister. Most professing Bible experts mix Christ's water and blood ministries together without knowing the difference and to their own destruction. I hope that's, this is enough details for you. The update today, plunging demand for COVID-19 tests may leave the U.S. exposed. We're going through a period of, it's like an overshadowing, and it seems like everybody's going to sleep. Everybody's going to sleep about what's happening. And I'm sorry that it's happening, but it is what it is, you know, kind of thing. So that's what I have to share with you um, as far as this update report, the mystery report number two. A, another is, mystery report is already started, and it's for Gary again. Because you see, hey, you sending me questions. He's get he's the squeaky wheel. He's getting the grease. That's the way it works. Just like sis, um, Sister Sandy, you, you're sending me the questions. And um, so my pledge to you, the mystery report um, subscribers, is to give you at least one newsletter and a lesson, just like this, and a video. And the, this video link will be put right here. And um, at least one per month moving forward. So today's the day. Appreciate your support very, very much. Hope that you get more information right here at the website. You subscribe to the Mystery Report program. If you just want access to the newsletters going back to 2019, you just click this button right here. $25, you're going to get a copy of my book. You want to do like Gary and send me questions and stay in Sister Sandy, you click this one over here. It's just $25 extra per year. And, um, and that's it. The, um, Hope that you are going to be numbered and counted among the living and that you're keeping nanosilver in your system so that we're, whenever the final the horn goes off, the trumpet goes off, then you're counted among the living because it looks like many, many, many are about to perish from what, from what I can see with the biological weapon. We're in the lull, the variant, the recombinant strain, incubation period, all that stuff. For some reason, people, many, many people aren't seeing it. They're relaxing, and that threat is going to take down many. Sorry for that aspect. I hope you see that you were helped by this video to see God's wisdom a little bit better in his three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water. And uh, my apologies that of the days that we're living in, that is, there's a lot of just bad things that are, that are going on at this time. Appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the next mystery report um, and the next newsletter. That will be number three.